Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai Bashem Rakakwadash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in these times. So I was watching this video here by um, Elder Mawatazak. This is his channel here, so you should really go subscribe. Mawatazak Ban God. And uh, he did this video here entitled, uh, Two Thirds of You Tribes Are Still Lost, Destroyed. Now he's another brother who does very good videos. I watch his videos a lot. Anyway, uh, he talks about uh, the scripture where the Heavenly Father said that he will melt these Israelites because basically uh, you got you got a lot of Israelites inside and outside of the truth that are just totally worthless. They're, they're uh, equivalent to what is called dross. And he brings out the scripture where the word dross is mentioned. And that's a, that's a pretty enlightening word to describe a lot of these Israelites, you know, beginning with those that are in the truth or claim that they're in the truth and then filtering out to these other Israelites out here. A lot of them are dross, which means they have a reprobate mind, which means they're totally worthless. And the only thing that can be done with them is they got to be sacrificed. They got to be put to death. Then they'll come back in the kingdom. It'll be in their right mind, you know. So without further ado, let me play a part of the video where he goes into that. Then we're going to look up the definition of dross. Now he looks it up in the, the Hebrew. And um, he brings out some of the definition, but I actually went and looked it up in the conventional dictionary, the word dross, and it's even more enlightening. All right, so without further ado, let's, let's get into this feast here, this feast of understanding, and um, hopefully this video will be edifying to you brothers out there and your few sisters that watch these videos, and uh, that'll be the video, so... Without further ado, let's get let's get into it. Majority of our people will be left here. All right. The Lord is going to leave you and he going to burn you. All right. Yep. He going to melt you. Matter of fact. Yeah. You know, uh, a scripture that comes to mind, uh, Elder Apostle always brings the scripture out. The Heavenly Father said he got a great sacrifice in Basra. Now, when you when you make a sacrifice, you got to have the meat. You know, you you got to have the the meat to sacrifice. Well, guess who the meat is? Uh, these wicked-ass Israelites out here, and beginning with uh, Esau, and, uh, you know, all the other nations, particularly that dwell right here in the melting pot, which is called America. America is called a melting pot. Now, here the Heavenly Father said he has a great sacrifice in Bozrah. So that sacrifice is going to be in the pot. And when you, when you have meat in the pot to sacrifice, you need what? You need fire. So where's the fire going to come from? It's going to come from our Lord, who's bringing the fire through these chariots and the missiles. Because even the Awashai said, I am come to send fire upon the earth. So it all ties in, man. The Heavenly Father says he has a great sacrifice in Basra. The modern day Basra, if you know the history... Basra, the ancient Basra, or ancient Basra, was a, one of the capital cities in Edom. So the modern day Basra would be America. America is a capital city for the nation of Edom. America is this great city, like it says in the book of Revelation, America is this great city, right? Great city for the nation of Edom, beginning with the top banking families. <coughs> the top banking families, they make the most money. Uh, they prosper the most off America. America is this consumer uh, corporation, if you will, because it's not even a country, it's a corporation, right? So, again, it all ties in, all right? Let me get that real quick. He, gonna, he getting ready to melt you, man. Yeah, because he got a great sacrifice in Basra, as it is written. Bozra is this modern day America. So 
part of the sacrifices, not only of the nations, starting with the nation of Edom, but two-thirds of you Israelites as well. Okay, you're going to be part of that sacrifice. Why? Because you're filled with dross. You're filled with uh, substance that is, is worthless. And how is that possible? Through your mind. You have a reprobate mind. You can't understand the truth. And this is starting with guys who claim they're in the truth, filtering the uh, Israelites out here in the world. Okay? And how is he going to melt you? With them uh, nuclear missiles, man. Yep. Ezekiel 22 and 20. And they gather silver and brass and iron and lead. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start up a, a couple. With the chariots too. Not just the nuclear missiles with the chariots. The chariots are going to be zapping uh, people, man. When when Yahweh comes with those angels and Yahweh himself is going to be in the chariot along with the angels, one of the things they're going to do besides delivering the elect, they're going to be zapping people. You know, people are going to get that hot, that hot laser beam, man. Let me bring out the scripture. Laser beam coming from those chariots. And a laser beam or laser is concentrated fire. Okay. Concentrated fire. It is right here. It's the one I want. The book of Matthew, the 20, the 24th chapter. Now, this is after the Lord. Now, in the same chapter, we read about how the Lord is going to deliver his elect, elect of the nation of Israel. The same chapter. This is the book of uh, Matthew 24 and 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. That's those chariots, so-called UFOs, with power and great glory. Yeah, because uh, the presence of those so-called UFOs is very majestic. And, and the power that they contain is uh, cannot be duplicated, man. They're going to be doing things that average normal aircraft cannot do. You know? This, this is what is meant by great power and glory. Now, let's, let's keep reading. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other, the elect of the nation of Israel. This is why we're always talking about the elect, because it, it really all goes back to the elect. Now, what about the rest of the Israelites that are not part of the elect? Well, let's read on. We're going to jump down to, we're going to jump down to, um, well, we're going to bounce around a little here to make the point. Matthew 24 and 44. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Right? Uh, jumping down to the 50th verse. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him. It's talking about Yahweh Shai. And in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder. So literally what that means is those laser beams going to come out in the chariots. Now in the book of Habakkuk, right? If we go to Habakkuk, let's go to prophecy in Habakkuk, the third chapter, because the prophet Habakkuk saw this. And, and uh, he, he trembled with fear. As a matter of fact, when you read the second verse, well, let's start the first verse. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Shiganoth. O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. Why? Because really when you get into this Bible, it speaks about great judgments that are coming, man. Great destruction, great terror. One of the titles of the Heavenly Father is the King of Terrors. And that's what he's coming to bring. He's coming to bring terror right along with his only begotten son. They're coming to bring terror, man. It tells us in the book of Daniel, 
the time of trouble that the earth has never seen before is, is upon us. So this is why Habakkuk said he was afraid. <laughs> you got a lot of Israelites that are not afraid, man. They don't have the fear of the Heavenly Father nor His only begotten Son in them. So they're going to be part of that judgment. O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. See? There's a scripture where it says Noah moved with fear to build the ark. Guess what? That's us, man. We're likened unto Noah. We're building the spiritual ark, which is this knowledge, this truth, to to uh, shield us from the destruction that's coming. Just like the, the ancient ark shielded Noah from the destruction that came, the destruction of the flood. Now, the point is, Noah was moved with fear to build the ark. That's us. We move with fear to build to uh, build this house of David, to build the tabernacle of David through this knowledge, through this truth. We're moving with fear. You got certain Israelites that don't move with fear. They don't have no fear. They do the work whenever they want to. They say whatever they want to. Whatever comes to mind, they say it. Even though it's not biblically sound, they don't give a shit. They don't care. They don't have no fear. Well, they're going to be dealt with, man. They're going to be part of the judgment. O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years, which the Lord have done that through us. He's revived his work through us. What's the work? To rebuild the nation of Israel, beginning with the tabernacle of David. That's, that's the work right now. Okay? Uh, revive thy work in the midst of the, of the years, in the midst of the years. Make, make known, <coughs> make known what? This, this knowledge, this truth. In, in wrath, remember mercy see so that's that's what's coming man some serious wrath man and then the prophet said lord remember in wrath when you bring your wrath <coughs> remember mercy who's the mercy going to be for for the elect okay but everybody else is going to be caught up in that wrath let's read some let's read about some of that wrath the heavenly father came from teman and the holy one from mount paran selah his glory covered the heavens. You know what that is? That's a dark saying for Yahweh Shai coming from the east to the west with an army of chariots, man. You know what uh, links up with that? Isaiah the 31st chapter, around the 5th verse, where it, where it says, Clearly, behold, he cometh of clouds, and every eye shall see him. All right? Actually, in, uh, 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 Isaiah 31 and 5 says, As birds fly, and so will the Lord. Matter of fact, you know what? Let me just get it. The, the, the scripture that I said actually quoted was Revelation 1 and 7, which ties in with Isaiah 31 and 5. Let's read that. It says, as birds fly, and there you go. So will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. That's when Yahweh comes with all those chariots. And in, in, the, in those chariots are going to be angels. One of those angels is going to be Michael the archangel. That's Daniel the 12th chapter. And Michael the Archangel represents war, okay, the angel of war, all right? So, indeed, our Lord is coming to bring war upon his enemies. Two-thirds of Israel, two-thirds of Israel is his enemies, okay? As birds fly and so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem, that's the elect. Defending also, he will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it. Yeah, the elect. A good scripture that links up with that is the book of Matthew 24 and 30, okay, which which we read, right? Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll go back to, but let me finish read Habakkuk, the third chapter. Again, what I read in Isaiah 31, Habakkuk ties in with it. With it. It's another precept. Uh, Habakkuk 3 and 3, uh, the heavenly father came from Teman and the holy one from Mount Paran, Selah, his glory covered the heavens, and the earth was filled or full with his praise. That's them chariots. And his brightness was as the light. And them, them, them chariots are immensely bright, man. Okay, they, as a matter of fact, uh, we always tell you the, the account of uh, Cristobal Colon, a.k.a. Christopher Columbus. He was being led over to the New World by chariots. So-called UFOs were, were uh, leading him, you know, um, he called them St. Elmo's Fire. That's what he called them, St. Elmo's Fire. All right? Why? Because of the, the lights were so bright, they looked like fire. So, the, so indeed, those chariots are a majestic sight. Anyone who's ever seen a so-called UFO chariot, they're, they're amazed by it. They're, they're enthralled by it, you know? 
So reading on, it says, and his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand. What do you think that means? Now, in the Red Bible, which is printed by the Jehovah's Watchtower Society, uh, located in Brooklyn, in the Red Bible, if you look in the column where the precepts are, clearly it'll say, or oh, bright beams coming out of his side. Something like that. It says bright beams. Beams of what? Lasers of fire. Concentrated fire. You know, destroying people, man. Like you saw in the movie, uh, uh, a good illustration, so you can get an illustration in your mind of what I'm saying. Uh, the movie um, War of the Worlds. The first one made back in the 50s and the second one made back in 2005 with Tom Cruise where, you, where they were being invaded by uh, so-called UFOs. But they're not going to be little green men from Mars. They're going to be Yahweh and the angels. That's the difference. And then there's a part in the movie where people start running from the so-called UFOs and laser beams of fire was being pelted down on the people. Well, that's actually going to happen. That's what I'm, I'm reading here. Habakkuk, the third chapter. And he had brightness. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand. And there was the hiding of his power. All right, this is written in a dark saying. This is not written in a way for everybody to get it. It's written in a dark saying, okay? And you need the Holy Spirit to, to open up your mind to understand it, what we're reading here. This is a vision that Habakkuk saw. Uh, the fifth verse, Before him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at his feet. Yeah, that's the fire coming down. As a matter of fact, the scriptures say that this place, America known as Babylon the Great in the Bible, will be turned into a lake of fire. Because when you have a combination of the chariots and the nuclear missiles, both of them are going to bring fire and it's going to turn this place into a lake of fire. Everything is going to be destroyed, man. And when the fire dies down, America is going to be 100% desert, man. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. 100% desert. Okay? Let me say that again, 100% desert. Even in the movie uh, uh, Planet of the Apes made back in 1968, there's a scene, uh, which we always talk about this, there's a scene where uh, Charlton Heston, you think he's on another planet being ruled by apes, but all, all along he was on the planet Earth, in particular New York. And the ape, you know, the, before he was set free by the apes, supposedly, <laughs> Before he was set f free by the apes, right, in the movie, he was told, look, you don't want to go out there. You may not like what you find. And they call that place the Forbidden Zone. So what did he find out, according to the movie? What did he find out? That, that, uh, that, America, that America indeed had become a desert. And then he gave that speech on the beach. You did it. You did it. Damn you all to hell. What did they do? They destroyed... You know, they, the World War Three finally happened, they just, and America was destroyed. It was turned into a desert, the Forbidden Zone. So yeah, I'm using analogy of the movie, but it's not too far from the truth. Okay, that's the future of America, man. The Forbidden Zone. It's the future of America is to be turned into a desert. So this is what we're reading here. Let me read it again. Habakkuk, the third chapter, the fifth verse. Before him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at his feet. All right, so let's go back to Matthew 24. The, the same thing we read in Habakkuk, pretty much is said in Matthew 24. Matthew 24 and 50, The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder. That's the beams of fire coming down from them chariots, man, cutting, cutting people in half, man destroying people, burning people up. As a matter of fact, uh, give you another example. When Moses went to receive the uh, commandments, that's exactly what he saw. He saw a chariot, and out of that chariot came the laser beams of fire, carving words into tables of stone, and then carving out the tables of stone, and, hand, and it was handed to Moses. That's what it's meant by the commandments were written with the finger of God. That was those laser beams of fire coming out the chariot, writing the words for Moses. 
that we would receive as laws, statutes, and commandments. All right, so the technology is very real, man. It wasn't Esau that came up with laser technology. It was the Heavenly Father. And shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There you go. All right. That, that says it all right there. Let's get back to the video. We'll start up one. Therefore, thus saith the, the Lord power, or the Lord Yahweh, because ye are all become dross. All right. And that's you, Jake's now. Yep. You're dross to the most high. Right. Dross. And dross is a, a filthy material that covers precious metals such as silver. All right, now let's look up this word dross, which I already went and did. Dross. And here you see the definition. Something regarded as worthless. Now you just heard the scripture that uh, the, the brother read. Matter of fact, let's bring that scripture on screen here. So you got a lot of Israelites, and I'm starting with those that know that they're Israelites. You got a lot of Israelites that are likened unto dross. Okay. Now the, the the elect is likened unto precious metals like gold and silver and precious stones. So gold and silver and precious stones that's covered with dross does not shine. And they're really they're if until they're cleansed, they're really worthless. Alright, so a lot of Israelites out here are covered with dross. Alright, because they have reprobate minds, because they uh uh their their doctrine is not 100 percent sound all right like the like the iuic like the isupk like these different groups all right with certain doctrines that they have that is not sound is not biblically sound they're likened unto dross okay here's the book of proverbs 25 and 4 take away the dross from the silver and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. See, so this is this is why it's good to be uh, uh, chastised because chastisement is the purification. That's the fire. Chastisement is the fire that purifies us, that gets rid of the dross. Okay, the fire. All right. Um. Yeah, Ezekiel 22 and 18, Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. All day are brass and tin and iron and lead. In the midst of the furnace, they are even the dross of silver. Ezekiel 22, 19, Therefore thus saith the Lord power, because ye are all become dross, Behold, therefore, I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem. And as you read on it, it says, he, the Lord says he will melt them. All right, so uh, <laughs> let's get back to the definition of dross. Dross. Something regarded as worthless rubbish. <laughs> like they say over there in Great Britain, you're rubbish. Okay. Then, um... Oh, I'm looking at the synonyms. I see the word chaff. The scriptures speak about chaff. You got the wheat and you got the chaff. Let's read. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, bear with me for a minute. So another word for dross is chaff, right? It is right here. This is the one I want. Jeremiah 23 and 28, the prophet that have a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that have my word, let him speak my word faithfully. So that's a hundred percent truth. What is the chaff to the wheat? So the wheat is the one that has the word faithfully and speaking the truth 100% faithfully. All right. Who is the chaff? The ones that are not speaking the word correctly. That have all kind of holes in their doctrine. They're the chaff. So they're dross. They're something worthless, useless. So the Lord said, what is the chaff to the wheat, said the Lord? Big difference. The chaff don't have the truth. 
the wheat have the truth. That's the big difference, man. So, uh, again, when you look at the word dross, you see one of the synonyms is chaff. Something that's worthless, useless, debris, debris, garbage, rubbish. Let's read on. Foreign matter, dregs, or mineral waste. In particular, scum, scum, there's another scripture where it speaks about the scum, formed on the surface of molten, molten metal, such as silver, dross. <coughs> so, we've got to get rid of the dross, okay? Bear with me for a minute. Matter of fact, you know what? Let's just go back to the video. Okay. Let's look up this word, uh, dross. The word is sayag. All right? A moving back or away dross, usually of silver, which is the impurities in the silver. Okay? The impurities. And what cleanses the impurities? The affliction. Okay? Which is the chastisement. It purifies us. Now, there's some Israelites that hate to be afflicted because they don't understand what they're involved in. The reason why the Heavenly Father afflicts us is to purify the dross out of us. Okay? Our Lord was purified. This is the book of Hebrews 2 and 10. For it became Him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory. Perfection. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings, right? Sufferings cleanses the dross. Afflictions cleanses the dross. All right? So, as the scripture has said, happy is the man whom the Lord chasteneth. But, you know, we got a lot of these Israelites that are not being chastened. Because pretty much they're not part of the elect. Okay? They got that dross on them. So when the time comes, they're going to be melted. They're going to be melted in that judgment, man. Hey, that's what dross is. Um, the refuse of metal, yep. scoria dross, take away the dross from the silver. All right? Silver of dross. You're no longer silver no more. You're the dross. You're the impurities that fall off the uh, silver when it's being refined. All right? Yeah, the, the, there's a scripture where the Lord said, my people have become degenerate. Uh, Jeremiah, the second chapter, beginning at the 20th verse. All right, they're filled with dross, the reprobates, inside the truth and outside of the truth. And I really like to start with the truth because you got individuals now that are really dross. They appear to be men of the Lord, but they're really dross because their doctrine is, is filled with holes. And they refuse to get their doctrine right because of pride, foolish pride. It says, baser metal, which having been mixed with pure, is separated from it by melting. Okay? See? Baser metal. The Apostle Paul spoke about that. You know, um, I was, let me end with that scripture. Uh... It is right here. Uh, the book of uh, the book of First Corinthians, the third chapter, ten verse. According to the grace of Yahweh, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and other other builded or another builded thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid. Which is Yahweh Shai. <coughs> yeah, Yahweh Shai first laid the foundation. All right. And we're, we're a, continu a continuation of the foundation Yahweh Shai laid. You know? Uh, now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, then you have wood, hay, and stubble. 
So what would be the dross in this collection here? Wood, hay, and stubble. Chaff. That's the dross. But then you have brothers that are gold, silver, precious stones, and they're shining. <laughs> What's shining? Their wisdom, their knowledge, their understanding. Because they're part of the elect. Then as we read on, it says, Every man's work shall be made manifest. That's right. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. So if you put fire to wood, hay, and stubble, what happens? It goes right up, man. But if you put fire to precious stone, silver, gold, all you're doing is purifying it even more. Okay? <clears throat> because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. See? So the fire is being put to us, man. The fire is the affliction of being in this truth. Now, if you're wood, hay, and stubble, you won't be able to... <coughs> excuse me. You won't be able to deal with the fire. But if you're gold, silver, and precious stones, if there's any dross in you, it'll be burnt off by the fire. So you can come out shining. It's pretty simple, man. Anyway, hopefully you were edified onto the next one.